Welcome back to Bat Fridays here at Superman Comic A Day as we cover Detective Comics number 30, The Return of Dr. Death. Yeah, he died in the last issue. Well, didn't really die, he's back. The Return. There's a lot of the returns in Batman stories. This comic was written by Gardner Fox. You can tell it was Gardner Fox because Gardner Fox gives Batman actual gadgets or things to put into his utility belt. That was his thing. When it comes to him and Bill Finger writing the early issues, Gardner Fox gives utility belt things. And this being the second issue in a row with, like, gas vials that Batman can just throw out and knock out people. He only uses them once per story if they were introduced. And he makes sure that we know he has them because he introduces them. And we kind of have an answer of who the other artist is on these comics. As I've said, Bob Kane cannot be trusted as the accredited artist in each issue. He generally had a ghost artist, possibly as early as the comic starting. And this comic at least gives us a co-penciler, that being Sheldon Maldoff, who would be many times Bob Kane's ghost on Batman. So I'm going to assume Sheldon Maldoff has been working on this comic before this. And knowing that he did the art in this issue, I'm going to accredit him as more of the artist, even though he's only penciler. While Bob Kane is accredited as both co-penciler and inker. Don't believe that for a second. Maybe he did. I just cannot trust Bob Kane at all. And as we're talking about art, I really like Batman art. Even these early issues of Batman, they have fun with the art from giving Batman really great iconic posing that you would see recreated in movies since Batman's been made into movies for the past 20 years. Okay, there was a bunch of shorts and of course Batman 66. That didn't really have really good posing, but they really got it down. Like the first panel in this comic is like, the same panel as the last panel from last issue, and it is just a great panel of him standing in front of the fire and just like the bat wings up. There's even like a sequence later where he's doing a sweeping kick and the cape is swooped over into the next panel. They, they are really having fun with the panel layout in a way that I really wish Action Comics and Superman would have had at the same time this is coming out. As I've said in my Superman comic a day reviews, Part of the problem with those early Superman stories is they don't really know what a comic is. They're just trying to kind of stretch out what a newspaper comic was in several pages. But there's not a lot of experimenting. Here we get some experimenting and some sort of new looks and ideas. It's, it's kind of wonderful. I'm still surprised how much I'm enjoying these early Batman stories. So for the actual plot, uh, a wealthy man by the name of Mr. Jones has died. His dead body turned purple. Which leads Bruce Wayne, who's still a bored socialite, nothing about his parents yet, to believe it was Dr. Death, even though Dr. Death supposedly died in the last issue. Also, there's like a million mad scientists in this universe. Superman comes across a guy who kills people, turning them purple, in like a year. Maybe like six issues. It's more common than you think. Yeah, they're not exactly in a shared universe right now. But still, by the way, I haven't been bringing this up. This isn't Gotham yet. This is New York City. It's not outwardly said it's New York City, just like it was never really outwardly said that Superman existed in Cleveland, but it's meant to be New York City, which makes a lot of sense. Under disguise as a reporter, which he does no work on, really terrible at disguising so far, he interviews Mr. Jones's widow, where she talks about she has a whole bunch of diamonds that were the only valuable she has, so Bruce assumes that Dr. Death is going to steal them, which he's right. Dr. Death, who has the whole, like, Invisible Man bandage look, is talking to his new Cossack. They actually say Cossack this time. Henchman, who looks just like Jabba in the last issue. This one's named Mikhail. I don't know where he's getting all these Cossack servants, and I don't know why they're constantly, like, big dudes wearing either turbans or a fez, but this is a very troubling aspect of these two issues. He sends Mikhail to get the diamonds. So we're going to have a Batman versus Mikhail, just like we had Batman versus Jabba in the last issue. Batman anticipates this, so he has already broken into the Jones's place and opened the safe and got the diamonds. When Mikhail comes in, but Mrs. Jones walks in, he's about to kill her. But that's when Batman jumps in and knocks him out. He just takes Mikhail's knocked out body and lays him outside and puts the diamonds there and puts Mrs. Jones back into bed. When Mikhail comes to, he just goes, hmm, I don't remember things going well, but I guess it did because I have the diamonds and just goes on. He's not suspicious of this at all. So, uh, Dr. Death is going to have a henchman problem. 
just like all the other mad scientists in this universe. And follows him where Mikhail gives the diamonds to a pawnbroker named Ivan Hurd, and then goes back to his room. Batman sneaks in and throws a gas vial to knock him out so he could search the room to find out where Dr. Death is. He finds nothing, and Mikhail comes to before Batman leaves and points a gun at him. He had been pretending to be asleep for some of it. You'd think Batman would know how long those gas vials roughly lasted. I guess he's not that Batman yet. We can forgive him for his mistakes. For now. With the gun pulled, Batman immediately jumps out the window. Mikhail follows him by sticking his head out, and that's when Batman swings back down and kicks him in the neck, breaking his neck. Oh my god! We'll forget about that because the comic forgets about it pretty quickly. Um, yeah, Batman just breaks that dude's neck with one kick. God, that's violent. This is also the panel where his cape is sort of into the other panels. It's horrific, but they really put their work into it. I mean, it looks wonderful. Moldoff is really kicking ass on these comics. Left with no other choices, Batman confronts Ivan Hurd. Ivan Hurd recognizes Batman immediately. I'm so fascinated that he's not like a myth in this, seeing how often that's done in the movies and how they did that with Superman. Yeah, I brought this up in every video at this point, but still, it's very surprising. Ivan Hurd tries to run away, but Batman uses his silk rope to grab him, and as he pulls him, it looks like a mask comes off Ivan Hurd's face. It turns out he was wearing a mask. It is, in fact, Dr. Death, who has had his face horribly burnt away by the fire from the last issue. So we already have a villain with a gimmick. Wow. No time at all, huh? And he looks like Death. Name starts making sense. And with him captured, he's put away in jail, and Batman returns the diamond. So yeah, a pretty entertaining Batman story. It hits some of the same beats as the last one, and he probably killed Mikhail, but they're really figuring him out quickly here. Plus he has the utility belt and gadgets, which is what makes Batman different. Actually surprised he hasn't used a gun yet. He has to be using a gun fairly quickly here because he only has like a year or two before Ellsworth is going to demand that a gun should never be used by Batman. But yeah, I can't actually wait till the next issue, which will be next week. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to get notifications when a new video goes up. I do these Monday through Fridays, Batman content being mainly Fridays, as it is Bat Fridays here on Superman Comic A Week. I'll see you guys again, same Bat time, same Superman channel. Bye.